very good morning, good afternoon, good night, whenever you will watch this video. So today our topic is Babcock's and Wilcox boiler. So now, supposing in your examination, if uh, this type of question may be asked that uh, uh, explain the working principle of Babcock and Wilcock boiler, then how we start? So now uh, we'll start with this video. So first thing that you can write about this boiler is which one that over here somewhere I will try to accommodate. First thing is what that from the geometry as you can say that over here tubes are present and over here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 that means more than one tube are present so it is known as multi tube boiler second point which thing you can write that as you can see that inside of the tube water is present and the tubes are surrounded with the help of few gases which is produced with the help of combustion of the coal that means inside of the tube water is present and that tube is surrounded with the help of uh, flue gases that is why it is known as water tube boiler second point third point if you want to write then that is the shell of the boiler and that shell of the boiler having which axis having this type of axis and that axis is which axis that axis is horizontal axis so over here you can draw this type of shell of the boiler and that shell of the boiler having which axis horizontal axis so i will write that this boiler is also known as horizontal axis boiler in my previous video, if you observed that I have explained about coastal boiler and in which I have written horizontal access boiler, but coastal boiler is actually a, a vertical access boiler. So it was my mistake. Sorry for that. So I have also mentioned one note and uh, below that uh, video that instead of horizontal boiler, it is a vertical boiler in the case of a coastal boiler. Now that is your horizontal boiler. Why? Because axis of the shell is horizontal. So it is a horizontal boiler. Next thing if I want to write then I can say that combustion of the fuel is taken place outside of the shell of this boiler that is the shell of the boiler and combustion of the fuel is taken place outside the shell of the boiler that is why this boiler is also known as externally fired boiler also so clear about that four points first point is which one more than one tube multi tube boiler next is what inside of the tube water is present and surrounding the water tube what is present few gases are present so that is why it is known as water tube boiler third one is what axis of this shell of the boiler is horizontal so that is also known as horizontal axis boiler and last point was what that the combustion of the fuel is taken place outside of the shell of the boiler so that is why it is known as externally fired boiler now we will discuss about uh, also one more important thing is that that over here whatever tubes are there that tubes are inclined it up to 15 degree that tubes are inclined it up to 15 degree so that we can take the advantage of natural circulation of water now how will take the advantage of natural circulation of the water due to the inclined it tube that I will discuss later Achha. so these are the uh, starting thing that you can discuss or you can write now next we will start with the important parts of this boiler. Now which are the important part? First part that you can see this type of tube which is known as header that is known as header. Use of header is what? That with the help of the header whatever hot water is there that hot water will move in the upward direction and enter into a boiler shell and convert it into a wax steam or you can say convert it into a steam. Now next important part is that tube, inclined tube which is known as down comers. That tube will do what? That down comers will do what? That whatever cold water which is present inside of that uh, boiler shell, that cold water will move in the downward direction with the help of that down comers. With the help of header what happen? Hot water will move in the upward direction and with the help of down comers what happen? Cold water will move in the downward direction. Now next important part is your buffer plates. So this portion, this cross-sectional portion that two plates are known as buffer plates. 
Now buffel plates will do what? That simply buffel plates will reflect the hot flue gases. Over here due to the combustion of the coal, what happened? Hot flue gases will produce and that hot flue gases will be reflected with the help of buffel plates like this. So what happened actually? That the buffel plates will increase the area of contact of your flue gases with the tube. Supposing if buffer plates are not used, so what happens? Flue gases will pass like this from the water tube. That means area of contact of your flue gases with the tube is that much only. That much only. Why? Because flue gases will simply pass like this. So area of contact of your flue gases with the tube is that much. But when you will arrange the buffer plates on the tubes, so what happens? Buffer plate will reflect the flue gases like this. That means without buffer plate, flue gases will pass like this. So area of contact is that much. But with buffer plates, what happens? Area of contact is increases how much times? Three times. How? That is your first contact of area, second contact of area of flue gases with your water tube, and that is your third contact of area. That means with the help of buffer plates, what happens? Uh, area of contact of your flue gases with the tube is increased three times. Than the original. Original means what? Simply without buffer plates, in the area of contact of flue gases with the tube is that much. With buffer plates, buffer plates will reflect the flue gases in this manner, which is sinusoidal function. Maybe you have seen the graph. So in this manner, when buffer plates will reflect the flue gases, so its increase area of contact of your flue gases with the tube will increase three times one, two, and three. Three times more than the initial area of contact means without using the buffer plates. Now uh, this is the meaning or use of the buffer plates. Now next is what buffer plates is then. Next is what next is your uh, anti priming pipe. That is your anti priming pipe. That is actually your anti priming pipe. Now in anti anti priming pipe having certain small holes. And inside of the anti-priming pipe, inside of that pipe, wet steam is present. Why? Because that anti-priming pipe is connected with the steam region, and in steam region, wet steam is present. So, in anti-priming pipe, wet steam is present, which has low temperature. Now, that buffer plates will do what? That buffer plate will supply the heat or supply the flue gases. To that the anti-priming pipe also, so that in anti-priming pipe, whatever wet steam is there, that wet steam is converted into a superheated steam. So clear about the meaning of anti-priming pipe. What it will do? Simply anti-priming pipe inside of the anti-priming pipe, which thing is present? Wet steam is present, and uh, to that wet steam, that buffer plates will provide the hot flue gases. So that in anti-priming pipe, wet steam is converted into a superheated steam, and superheated steam having a very high temperature compared to wet steam. So that is the meaning of anti-priming pipe. Now, next important uh, part is your this part, the cow part. The cow, you can say pipe. The cow pipe is known as a superheater. Now, superheater use of superheater is what that inside of this superheater, inside of this superheater, superheated steam is present. That means inside of that pipe, which is your superheater, superheated steam is present. And the superheated steam is given by what is given by anti-priming pipe because in anti-priming pipe wet steam was present, but due to that buffer plates, what's happened? Flue gases are passed through that anti-priming pipe, and in anti-priming pipe wet steam is there that is converted into a superheated steam, and that superheated steam having a very high temperature is given to that superheater. So that now superheater will also transfer the heat or reject the heat to that water tubes. That means superheater is a additional heating device. Why it is a additional heating device? Because over here, due to the combustion of the coal, hot flue gases are produced, and that hot flue gases will heat the water tube. Plus. Superheater will do what? It inside of the superheater, superheated steam is there, and it has a very high temperature, so that that superheater will also heat the water tubes. That means superheater is an additional device which is known as accessories. Later we will discuss in the upcoming video. Then due to that the superheater, it will increase the efficiency of this Babcock and Wilcock boiler. 
Now after superheater, next device is your uh, steam stop valve. So whatever superheated steam is there in superheater, that superheated steam is given to this steam stop valve. Over here superheated steam is there, that superheated steam is given to the steam stop valve. Now steam stop valve will do what? That it will not allow this superheated steam to escape from the shell of the boiler. That means superheated will steam will present inside of this superheater because steam stop valve is closed. Clear about that? Okay. Now next is which one? Next is your water level indicator. Now simply water level indicator will do what? It will indicate the level of the water which is present inside of the boiler. Now the next and last important device is which one? That is your manhole. Now on the shell of the boiler, manhole is provided. Now use of manhole is what? That over here one hole is there. So from this hole, a person can or a man can enter inside of the shell so that man can clean the shell or boiler properly. We hear about the use of manhole also. Now these are the important parts. Now we will start so simply which thing you will remember first one is header what's happened with the header once again I will say that whatever hot water is there that will enter into a vessel next one is uh, down comers whatever cold water is there that will move in the downward direction that is your buffer plates buffer plates will do what it will reflect the hot flue gases so that area of contact of flue gases is increasing with the water tube so heating is more then next is what next is your anti priming pipe anti priming pipe will do what whatever uh, that uh, buffer will provide the flu uh, flue gases to that anti priming pipe so anti priming pipe will convert the wet steam into a superheated steam now next one is superheater superheater is an additional heating device uh, inside of superheater superheated steam is present superheated steam is present due to that superheater will provide the extra amount of the heat to that uh, flue gases and uh, after that next is your steam stop valve which will not allow the superheated steam to escape from the boiler next one is your water level indicator which will indicate how much amount of water is present inside of the boiler and last one is manhole so through that hole a person or man can enter inside of the shell and can clean the shell properly for maintenance purpose also now we'll discuss these are all the uh, important parts now we'll discuss about the working principle of this boiler so generally boilers are used for what purpose they are used to produce or generate the high pressure and high temperature of the steam so at the top portion you can see that uh, steams are pressing is present now inside of the boiler some uh, shell some water is present which is generally two third part of this shell that means two part of water and one part of steam is present. Now we start with the working principle that how with the help of this boiler Babcock and Wilcock boiler we can produce the steam. So how we start first of all what we will say that uh, we will place the or we will uh, put the coal which is used as a fuel on the grate. So that is known as fire grate. Fire grate means what it is one type of net or one type of grill on which you are putting the coal. After that we will ignite the coal. So what's happened? Combustion of coal is taken place. Due to the combustion of the coal, hot flue gases will produce. That hot flue gases will pass through the water tube with the help of this buffer plates. After that, that buffer plate will also provide the uh, few gases or the buffer plates will also provide the heat to that uh, anti-priming pipe also. In anti-priming pipe, wet steam is converted into a superheated steam due to that uh, hot flue gases. After that, that superheated steam will enter into a superheater. In superheater, superheated steam is present which has very high temperature. So superheater will also reject the heat or superheater will also heat the uh, pipe or water tubes. After that, that uh, after heating the uh, superheater, uh, what happens that flue gases will pass through the chimney and then that flue gases will be rejected into the atmosphere. Now that is all about the working principle and also after uh, the combustion of the coal, whatever burnt particles are there that will be collected inside of the ash pit. Now, as I told you that fire, that tubes are inclined up to certain angles. 
so that we can take the advantage of natural circulation. Now, how we will take the advantage that we will see of natural circulation. Now, inside of the tube, right now water is present, cold water is present. When that cold water is heated with the help of what? With the help of hot flue gases and with the help of superheater. At that time, that cold water is converted into a hot water and hot water has a low density so that uh, that hot water will come into in the upward direction and collected inside of the shell of the boiler. Again, with the help of down Comer, what happens? Whatever cold water is present inside of that shell will move in the downward direction. Again, it will be heated, so it will be converted into a hot water, and hot water has low density, so hot water will move in the upward direction with the help of the header and uh, collected inside of the shell. Again, from the feedback valve, if we will enter cold water, so what happens? Cold water has high density so it will move in the downward direction with the help of down comers then it will enter into a fire tube so that cold water will be converted into a hot water hot water has low density so it will move in the upward direction with the help of header it will be collected in the uh, shell of the um, that boiler so that circulation of uh, water will be continue and that circulation of water is based on natural circulation so over here, natural circulation in sense of what cold water is entering uh, in the downward direction and hot water is enter, uh, moving in the upward direction due to the density difference. We are getting the natural circulation of water which is also known as natural convection. Now natural convection means what? That with the help of density difference, if uh, circulation of water is taken place, then it is known as natural convection. So last point can I write like this? That this boiler is known as as a natural circulation type boiler also. Why natural circulation type boiler? Because as hot cold water has high density so it will move in the downward direction. When it is heated so it will convert into a hot water. Hot water has a low density so it will move in the upward direction. Again cold water has high density it will move in the downward direction with the help of downward comers and then heated then low density then with the help of header it will move in the upward direction. Now uh, these are the uh, work, working principle of this Babcock and Wilcox boiler. Now I would like to end this video. Till then read hard, work hard. Thank you very much.